What up, what up, what up, what up? You already know what it is. You have just entered a giant's world. So, we have our new general manager, our new head coach in place. And, um, she, you know, frankly, I'm I'm kind of like, hey, I'm, I'm, at least we got those positions filled and we can move forward now. But, I mean, I, I really got to say from the bottom of my, my gut, I don't know how to really feel about Daniel Jones moving forward as our franchise quarterback. I, I don't know how to feel about that. I also don't know how to feel about picking a general manager who has never been a general manager, picking a head coach who has never been a head coach after all of the disastrous, hideous seasons we've just went to for almost a decade now. You know, you would pick this unexperienced type of roster when it comes to upper management your GM and head coach I, I, I just don't understand the thought process in that coming from Mera and Tish I don't, I don't understand it I don't understand it picking a franchise picking a franchise in Mara wrote words to that has turned their franchise around okay now, please tell me this. What has Buffalo Bills done in the last five years other, other than get to the playoffs? Please tell me that. They have won nothing. Zero. Zilch. If that's the case, you can make a case for the Cowboys being a great team. If that's the case... I mean, if you want to talk about a team going into the playoffs, that's it. I mean, they didn't start really kind of winning, in my opinion, <laughs> until Tom Brady left the league. Until Tom Brady left their actual division. Okay? You know, and I had a feeling that was going to happen, too. So, we hire a coach... We hire a general manager who was with the Buffalo Bills and we hire these candidates film basically going off of the juices of because they have beaten the New England Patriots. I mean, in the playoff game? I mean, but... <laughs> that wasn't the Tom Brady Patriots. I mean, let's be serious, people. That was not Tom Brady and the Patriots. Okay? Yeah, that makes a big, big difference. Okay? They lost to Kansas City two years in a row. years in a row they did not make it to the AFC conference finals they didn't so why are we running off of these type of juices picking these type of candidates when you could have easily even at least interviewed Eric B. Enemy who has won a Super Bowl as offensive coordinator but I know that's not I know that's long gone. We have hired these people. But I just don't understand the thought process. I do not understand it. I don't. Plenty of qualified candidates out there for that job and you pick these people to be your GM and offensive coordinator and, and head coach a GM mind you 
that has started from the ticket office. Now, correct me in the comment section below if I'm wrong on this. Most GMs, I guess, never play the game of football. Most GMs are like pretty much, a, you know, went to school to be an attorney or some sort of business management, maybe. I don't understand what gives them the right to say this person is going to be a good player. This person, that person is not going to be a good player. Who and what gives them the right to judge that? And then the owner is the one who signs off on it saying, yeah, okay, yeah, I like that choice. How do you like that choice? You're not a football guy. I don't care if you've been in football and been watching football for the long, I don't care. I do not care. I mean, in my opinion, if you've never been like a real athlete and played any type of competition, how could you really judge this? Like, I, I mean, as far as scouting, how, how could you really judge that? How? You know, so there were plenty of better candidates out there that we could have went and splashed on, especially with experience. Especially ones who have won the big game, who has been to the big game, who has experience in the big game. I seen Brian Dable's interview, and I and, and all of these people are gushing, just like they were gushing over Joe Judge. What I picked up from that interview or a press conference from Brian Dable was a inexperienced, newly created head coach. What could he possibly say? Uh, I, I mean, I could have told you what he was going to say going into it. Even the, even the questions that was going to come his way. I could have told you what his answer was going to be. He has never done, he's never been a head coach before. Now, I'm not saying don't hire him because he has never been a head coach. I'm, I'm really not saying that. What I'm saying is there was plenty of overqualified candidates in that pool in which we could have picked from. Given the fact that we have been so disastrous in the last decade, you go and pick basically yes men that who's not gonna push up against you, Mara, the real GM of the team. You go and pick these people who have Ne who has never been in these type of positions I mean so I, I just I, I don't get it you don't give a call to Brian Leftwich who was calling the offense for Tom Brady you don't you don't give him a call at least you don't give Eric the enemy a call these people have won championships these people have went to the, the big game. They know what it takes. Not some coaches who have got bounced in the first and second round of the playoffs and that's, that's their ceiling. They don't know what it takes. They've never been there. They still don't know what it takes. They've never been there. At least Joe Judge was on a damn team that have, has been there and he can say, yeah, I see what, I seen what it takes. Joe Shane cannot say that. Well, Debo, he can kind of say that now that I think about it because he was on the Patriots staff and um, yeah, he was there for a few Super Bowls. But nonetheless, Joe Shane has never seen it. But uh, I'm not... I'm not really going to attack my team like that. I'm not... I'm really not. I'm just basically on it like, hey... 
we got to do a better job. And this whole thing about Daniel Jones, and you got you, you know, you you vloggers and YouTubers talking about Daniel Jones as if he's supposed to be the savior of the the New York Giants is com completely hilarious to me. This guy has been in the league for four years and we still don't know what he's about. That's that's hilarious. We still are questioning who he is, who he is. We still don't know his ceiling. I don't want to hear anything about a offensive line when the offensive line for the team that's in the Super Bowl right now just basically allowed their quarterback to get sacked nine times in the playoffs in the uh, uh, O-line that consists of fifth round and sixth round picks, okay? We're not trying to hear that. They have a good quarterback that's balling. The man is balling. What's up with Daniel Jones? We're not trying to hear that. Oh, he can't do this. Oh, he and he can't hold on to the damn ball. He can't stay on the field. I mean, what the freak is up with all of that? Like, really? Like, really? So, you know, don't hand me that. Don't give me that. I don't want to hear that. The last time we hired a coach with experience, with Super Bowl experience, was Tom Coughlin. It's the last time. And what happened as a result of that hiring? We won two Super Bowls. We have to start to understand as a fan base that we're not going to go along with whatever the ownership group wants to do, whatever they want to do. Even though it's their team, it's our team too because we are highly invested in this particular team now you can say what you want as far as uh, Daniel Jones is concerned we've had gone on four years of Daniel Jones now and if you don't know what the heck he is I, hey listen I feel sorry for you you know if you're a Daniel Jones fan I feel sorry for you more power to you would I want Daniel Jones to be one of the best elite quarterbacks in the league? Damn straight. I love an underdog. I was rooting for Daniel Jones because I root for the New York Giants. But I have seen what Daniel Jones is about. I have seen that he's incapable of staying on the field. That's a big, big problem to me. On top of that, he doesn't have like a regular knee injury or you know muscular injury somewhere. The man has a whole freaking broken neck injury, a neck injury. What are we gonna do if Daniel Jones is hit the wrong way and his career is done? When you had when you had the chance to go after top flight quarterbacks. When you had the chance to draft a great up-and-coming new potential star, what are we going to do then? I mean, do we want to risk that right now? Do, do we want to put ourselves in that particular predicament right now? You're starting over as a franchise, allegedly, because... I mean, if you're going to come in here and think you're going to keep these players and say that it's just just been the coaching staff around them, this is the reason why, you know, you a damn fool. Okay? I've watched enough football to know that. 
But um, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment sections below. I do think that the New York Giants will get back to the where they're supposed to be. But you know, I've just I just simply was questioning the moves we just made and how we went about this uh, particular process. Hiring a coach, you know, bringing in De uh, Brian Dabo for two interviews before you can even give a coach one interview. I mean, it was just like, come on, man. Like I was saying before in my other video, before Dabo was hired, I said, come on, we all know you're hiring Brian Dabo. Come on now. The writing is all, all on the wall. ridiculous but uh you let me know what you think in the comment section below let me know if you think we should move on from daniel jones let the world know by commenting in the comment section below if you think the new york giants should move on from daniel jones right now that's big we it's proven that we have to have a good good great quarterback going into these high ranking games involving the playoffs so you let me know what you think in the comment section below don't be shy be sure to hit that like and subscribe button hit that like button hit that subscribe button i love you all let's beat this algorithm until next time i love you all except for the ones i don't peace